can't buy It resides between my eyes Walk through the fire Came out better on the other side See life's like a peach If you find the same And right now I'm feeling like a hundred grand You are listening to Inspired Insider With your host, Dr. Jeremy Wise Jeremy Weiss here, uh, founder of InspiredInsider.com. This will be a part of the podcast, but it was too good to not just share with everyone right now. So um, we're going to talk about productivity tools and how you could save hundreds of hours um, a month. And, you know, I'm going to introduce Adi in a second. But, you know, the funny thing is, Adi, most people don't know this. When I first set out to start a podcast, I thought I was going to be the foremost podcast on productivity. I was just going to interview people talking about their productivity software, their tools, or productivity experts who could share their their stuff. That was like the roots of what I wanted to focus in on early on. And I realized that's a very narrow niche. And so, uh, but I am super excited about this conversation because you are one of the experts I know, and I'm going to give you a formal introduction. This episode and all episodes are brought to you by Rise25. We help businesses launch and run their podcast so they can give to their best relationships and serve their business. So you can check that out at rise25.com. Uh, Dee is going to share her best productivity tools um, and tools in general. If you don't know Dee Clevett, um, she is the founder of Business Success Consulting Group. They help businesses scale and grow by implementing efficient business infrastructure processes and systems. And her company... Uh, they're experts at creating, documenting, implementing processes and procedures. You can go, you know, they can check them out at bizsuccesscg.com. I encourage anyone who has their own productivity tools to, if you are watching live, um, you know, to comment actually in the chat on what are your favorite productivity tools, health or business or whatever, financial, whatever it is, put them in the chat so everyone else can learn. I also want to thank Owen, who's founder of Sweet Process. Dot com who introduced us. And I know Adi is a huge fan of Sweet Process and what they use to document sense systems. Um, so thank you. And uh, Adi, thanks for joining me. And um, we can just go through, I don't know, whatever can, desktop apps, phone apps. Where do you want to start with your favorite productivity tools? Okay. So let's start. Uh, first of all, thank you for the introduction. And I'm so happy to be here. Um, Let's start with the different groups. I think if we group them, that will help us, right? Cool. So, you know, we have emails. We have emails. So we have productivity tools to help us with help, help us with emails. Yes. Then we have task management programs such as Asana, Monday, etc. So that's that's a group by itself. Then taking notes, that's a group by itself as well, right? Like how do you take notes? Then we have calendars, ca all kind of productivity tools for calendars, like uh, mm. scheduling, etc. And document management, it's also a part of it, right? Like how do you organize your documents? Um, so I think those are the broad tools that I see. And also CRMs, you know, that's definitely important, you know, having the CRM. And everything integrates with one another, right? And then we yeah. have different things like, you know, different tools that across the boards like you know your favorite tool that you're going to probably mention right about the, the right the one that you taught me that i've been using which is great yes <laughs> so you can first of all i want to say everyone should take out a pen and paper or take notes mm -hmm. wherever you take notes because this is going to be jam-packed i'm going to be taking a ton of notes so yeah yeah exactly so you know and it's different companies i'm not affiliated i mean it's kind of like you can use whatever you want i'm just telling you what i've seen that works with my uh with my own company and with my clients and what i've noticed that what i like so let's start with email let's talk about email so now i introduce you to that uh particular uh tool and it's called same box it's s-a-n-e box mm -hmm. and what it is, it basically organizes your email. So it's it's an automated system that you can um, that sorts the emails for you in different folders. So I can tell you what what it did for me because I think it's important to talk about the overall strategy before we implement the tactics and the tools, right? Yeah. So my strategy was, you know, I want to get zero inbox, meaning zero emails in my inbox at the end of each day. So in order to do that, you have to identify what actually comes into your inbox. So the first thing that I did is I implemented a 
policy with my staff and when I do it with a client and we write this policy, a communication policy. So internal communication does not belong on email. Internal communication should be on some kind of a channel like Teams or Slack, like some kind of an in, internal communication, instant messaging. It can be like on Google Chat. I like Slack personally. I use it. I also use uh, Microsoft Teams with some clients that have that. But that is where the internal communication should go. I try to stay away from email for internal discussions because then, you know, you CC people. You get into those threads. You don't know what followed and what not. And the conversations become very, um, it becomes complex and it also clutters your inbox. So I removed all internal communication with the consultants that work with me, with my business development person. All internal communications are off the email. So that's right there. 50%, 60% of the emails are out, right? So the only emails that I want to see in my inbox are emails from existing clients, prospective clients and any referral partners, you know, and any affiliates or any um, other trusted advisors that I work with, you know, like let's say emails from Jeremy will come to my inbox. So we have a communication or he does an introduction. I do an introduction. It goes to the inbox because that's the method of, of communication. Um, just on that as a note, like if I have clients that are using Slack or using uh, Microsoft Teams or any other um, software like that, then they add me to their um, Slack or Teams, and then I can just switch between accounts. So the communication between me and my clients can also be done on one of those platforms. But let's say we're talking about clients that do not use that. So then I will have my communication with my clients come to my inbox. And again, also prospective clients and any um, referral partners or colleagues that I collaborate with. So that will be that's what I want to see in my inbox. The rest of it, I want it out of my inbox. So what Sandbox does, it will take all my newsletters, for instance, and we'll put it into a, a folder. It's called Sane News. So I basically get all the newsletters or so anything that I subscribe to. And I bet you, you're probably thinking, well, I don't subscribe to that many. Well, that's what I thought too. Hmm. But then when you actually use Sandbox, you will be surprised on how much you got subscribed to. Maybe you didn't like I mean, I, I swear I did not subscribe myself to each and every one that I'm getting. Right, Jeremy? You know what I'm talking about? Yes. But somehow I'm getting all these newsletters and they have great information. I really like some of them I do use. I learn a lot from others. You know, I really believe that um, learning from others is very important. I love those newsletters. Just like I send a newsletter out that is very informative. I want people to read it. I want to read theirs. I don't want to just get rid of it. But uh, what happens is that those newsletters, they come in at random times. So your inbox get full of emails that arrive at random times that you don't necessarily need to read them throughout your workday. So same news. Nor do you want to get distracted by them. if they, Exactly. You know. Exactly. Like, you know, I love I love the tips that Donald Miller sends out right from the story brand. Great tips. Love to listen. Love to look at them. There is a, another productivity coach that I follow, Paul Miners. Love his tips. But I don't want to sit in my inbox at random times. So what happens is that all of those get channeled into one folder and it takes me probably just a few minutes to scan through all of it at the end of the day and just open those that I want to read. And I read it, I scan through it, and I'm done. And then I will tell you that later on, I'll talk about what I do with the email. So I don't just leave it there sitting in a box, right? It's either I do something with it or I file them. But regardless, I look through my same news and I look at all the newsletters. I read the ones that I want. The other ones I will delete. So what I do is I will have a box with same news and there will be like probably like 40 or 50 emails at the end of each day. So I will click the button at the top so it will highlight all of them. And then I will basically uncheck those that I want to read and I will delete the rest. So then I'm left with three maybe. I'll scan through, I read it, and then I will delete them. Or will Do you archive them, them or delete yeah. them? I mean, the ones that I'm not going to use, that I know that I'm not going to use, I delete them. The other ones are archive. So And those that I really I mean, think I'm going to refer to them, I will label them so then I can very easily find them in the future. But that takes a few minutes. I get my information that I want, and they're out of there. Then Sandbox also puts the emails. There are certain categories of emails that are being put into another um, folder. It's called Send Later. Now, you can 
train sane box what should go to sane later as opposed to keeping in new inbox again all communications for clients super important for me always in my inbox because i have to see it right but let's say i get notifications from monday.com or asana because some of my clients use monday some of them use asana and i am on their asana on their monday i need to know some some of the tasks that were done or i need to look at it i need a reminder I don't need to see it right away. So that goes into saying later. And again, saying later, I look twice a day, um, mid morning and the end of the day. So then I look at saying later, that's those are emails that I um, train saying box to put it later. So I don't, they don't need my inbox all the time, right? So that way I can really control my email. It's either waiting for me to look at it later or I have in my inbox any communications from clients or from prospective clients or from affiliates. And the thing that I do is I go over my inbox and I label it. So each one has a label or a client. When a client signs up, one of the onboarding process that is being done in our company is that each client gets labeled. The to and the from gets a label and then it goes into a folder. I see it in my inbox, but I also see it in a folder. So the information is always there. So once I see the email, I hope that's I open the email. It's either I'm going to handle it right there, you know, I can respond right there and then archive it and move it out of the inbox, or I will send it into my project management or my task management software. Mm -hmm. I don't leave emails in my inbox for to do, because what happens is then you look at your inbox again and then you remind, you have to remember, oh, that, that email from Jeremy, I should send him that introduction that he asked me. Yeah, I don't have time right now. I'll do it later. Okay, so then I spend time doing that, reminding me. An hour later, I check my email, and it's the same thing. You know, so that is wasted time. Those are valuable minutes that you can regain back. So, let's say Jeremy, you send me an email and you ask me to, um, you know, write something or give you some something that I said I'm going to do. Maybe you want to see my onboarding process and you wanted me to send it to you. Okay, I don't have time right now. My day is very busy, right? Or maybe it's something that my team can do. I don't need to do it myself. I'll open the email. I'll forward it to, I use Asana personally. I mean, my, in the company, we use Asana. So I will forward it to Asana to my tasks. So we'll forward the email to Asana. Asana gives you like an email address that you can forward it. So it forwards from my inbox to my task management software. And it sits there for me to do when I'm actually um, prioritizing my task, but now it's out of my inbox, but it's not forgotten, but it's not sitting there. Yeah. So, so you could, you have a, everyone has a, in Asana has an email they could just take and then forward to, to go into Asana. Yeah. And Monday does the same. Yeah. So um, Monday.com. So I really suggest that you use your inbox. Your email is like a gateway to all of your other tools, right? This is where the entrance is, the entrance of communication. So you are, first of all, you have to make sure that you have the uh, communication policy written correctly in terms of this is what I'm doing, this is what we are doing, this is how we use Slack or any other messaging system, this is how we use emails, this is how we use this, this is how we use that. And then you get everybody to agree on it, and then your gateway will be your from external through email, and then you channel it. It's a tough transition, you know. Something, you know. I know when we switched over to Slack, I was in a bad habit of emailing when with internal communication, and we'd have to like have everyone police each other. Like yeah. if I send you an email, like yell at me. I don't care who you are. Yell at me. Like do not send me an email. When it's an internal team member, you have to go to Slack. And also the flip side, I have to be yelled at, Adi, honestly, that sometimes I'll task someone in, in Slack of like, hey, do this. And like, no, I have to put the task in Asana because exactly. of, you know what I mean? So there's a, a crossover, but you're right. Like starting with the, the overall strategy and concept, if you don't get that down, everything gets cluttered. And it's not, it's not efficient. I remember, I mean, you told me like you, you need to use Sanebox. Uh, you said, no, you didn't say that. You said, I use Sanebox. It's amazing. I'm like, I trust you. I signed up like the next day and I got a, in, uh, a notification 
like a week after and it's like you just saved 8.9 hours this week and i believe it because it it has some kind of ai function i'm not sure, exactly sure how it works but it definitely sifts it so only the most important stuff goes to your inbox your primary inbox so that the rest of it you can check later that day it's not as urgent and then there's a little bit of training but it's so easy because you just drag if something shows up in another folder you just drag it into the primary inbox and then it learns to only send that into the primary inbox so it's very easy to train it but some i don't know what how it works but for some reason it sorts it um already it's like 90 it was like 95 percent like accurate of where it was sorting absolutely and you know just on, on that one on the training internally what i what i do is if a team member will send me an email and i know it belongs on slack so what I do is I take a picture of the email, like a snippet, the picture, and I put it in Slack. And I said to remind, to answer your question, here it is. So I continue the conversation mm -hmm. on Slack. So I think that's a training method as well and a way to hold each other mm -hmm. accountable. So let's say somebody tasks me something on Slack and they should task it to me in Asana or in Monday. It should be actually going, the conversation should be there. Then I will answer it in Asana. I will actually put it myself in Asana and I will continue the communication. So yeah. each one of us can be a communication police by channeling it to the correct channel. Right. Yeah. And one thing I do, I love that you said, you know, Slack has been game changing for us. Mm -hmm. And it's it's sometimes a hard habit to break. Um, so you need other people on the team to hold everyone accountable. But I uh, uh, installed G Meter. I don't know if you've heard of it. So no. G Meter um, basically it just tracks how many emails you're getting from specific email addresses. So um, I basically go to G Meter and basically it shows you every month. I think it's gmeter.com. It's for Gmail. Um, mm -hmm. It shows you every month. So that's not the right one. It shows you every month how many emails are coming in from different people. Um, and it's somewhere, free Gmeter, apps on Google Play. Um, I can't find it, but um, yeah, it's called something like Gmeter. And so I try and my biggest communications via email, I try and take it to some other form of communication so it's not coming in to email, right? Like if my business partner, if I get, you know, a thousand emails this month, like we need to, use, we need to start making sure we're on Slack and not using email. So it makes me just more aware of actually, um, like who I'm sending to and who I need to just get off of, you know, email, I guess. Absolutely. And no phones, you know, I, no text, you know, I don't, I don't want to be communicated via text because what happens is that you know, they get buried, right? And you can't really, you can't forward it, you can't direct it. So what I end up doing, if like, let's say I have somebody that texts me, a referral partner, for instance, just texted me. So I have to pin it to the top so I don't forget to answer it or I can send it to my assistant so she can schedule him. And it just doesn't, it's it's hard. You know, It's it, you have to discipline the people that talk to you also to make sure that they're using the right lines. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I it used to be maybe called G Meter, but it's email meter, email statistics for Gmail and G Suite. So it, it mm. gives you the the um, email meter gives you the messages sent, the recipients, um, the res your response time, all those things. So, but I use it just so I can take things off of email. Like, who do I need to take off of email and communicate not on email with? Maybe internally. So it's like a signal to me I'm not doing things properly. I guess. Yeah. No, but that's good. It's a very good tool. All right, so we talked about email, right? I think we extensively talked about email and there is more to do. We can talk more about that, but I think we should move to the next subject, which should be, uh, which one would you choose? I mean, maybe um, note taking or? Yeah, I mean, I think you talked a little bit about inter internal communication. You talked about Slack teams and Google chat and kind of the rules around that. If there's anything else on the internal communication that you would, you want to point out? You know, in internal communications, you know, it's important to use threads so you can actually follow through and what follow up on what you are saying, right? Because otherwise it gets all jumbled. And I'm also think you need to use, um, it's good to use channels. You know, like in Slack, you can build channels. You can use it also on Microsoft Teams and I'm sure the other softwares that are out there. So when you create a channel, just be very um, thoughtful about what those channels are and who should be part of this channel and what to put there and what not, right? I mean, you can have your random channel, like it would be like the water cooler or like whatever, just, just, 
you know, if people want to post different funny things or, you know, memes or GIFs or whatever it is, just put it there. But don't right. don't put it in, in general, you know, it's just like, you know, because it, it clogs the conversation. So like happy birthday can go on the random one. Don't put it on the general. Right. So yeah. people can, because otherwise it gets it. Then 50 people decide that they want to answer to it, but they, they should. Right. But then it becomes it, it clogs it. So you have to be very aware that. You want the communication to flow. It's like a river that flows. You want you don't want to put all these dams there that will stop it, or all those places that it will diverge into different pe- places as opposed to just going in a straight line. So be very cognizant of that. I'm very big on right doing the right channels, not too many, but um, you know, and also see what is immediate needs immediate response and what doesn't. Like for instance, in our company, the rule is. If you want my immediate attention, then go to my my personal channel. In terms of it says a D, you just you slack me right there. Sometimes I'm on the phone and my team needs to let me know something, or you know I need to let them know it's something urgent, or you know oh that person has to be rescheduled right now, or a client needs help right away. But if it's something that oh I just read an amazing article and I think we should discuss it in our staff next staff meeting, please do not put it on my direct channel because then I need to re- process it and evaluate whether it's important to do it right now or later. So right. this one should go on a channel can say think tank, you know, or future or discussion yeah. or ideas, as opposed to, let's say we have a channel on clients. So all the clients will go there or like business development. So I think yeah, rules of slack. Cause I definitely have pet peeves when it comes to slack. Like if someone doesn't put it on the same thread, that's a pet peeve because it doesn't continue the conversations. If anyone uses Slack, you know what I'm talking about. It's yeah. it's not even that easy to do a thread. You have to kind of find the little button, click the thread, and then continue the conversation. That's why I think in Facebook groups with um, there's issue people have issues because in Facebook when you leave comments, it just pushes all the previous comments down. And right. the same thing happens in Slack, but Slack actually allows you to thread conversations. You don't. You know, you don't need to sift through all the comments to figure out, is this for, the, you know, three comments above it? Or is it from three, com- you know, four comments above it? So threading, you've made a major point. Like if you use Slack and you don't use the threads, it's not efficient at all. Yeah. And the same thing with Microsoft Teams. You also yeah. have to continue the conversation. Yeah. So, you know, it's it's kind of like, you know, if you want to be a really good athlete, you have to practice. You have to practice daily. So if you want to be very efficient, you have to practice. You know, some of us have more of an inclination towards it. Some of us have to learn it more. But once you get you get a grasp of it, once you get it into a routine and into a habit, it will create such a huge difference in your life that it's totally worth it. It's just like being in really good shape. You know, it takes time. You have to go to the gym. You can't, you know... Sleep through your alarm clock, yeah, yeah, and it's like it's not going to happen. So then you can sit on the couch and complain about it, or you do something about it. So that you, you know, how granular do you get with channels in Slack? Do you have a channel for each client, or do you just have a channel for Mm-mm. clients? What do you do? I, you know, the majority of the communication on client actually happens in Asana. There is mm. no reason to communicate on Slack. The thing that if there is a communication on Slack will be more like you know. Jeremy cannot make it to the call. He needs to, he's half an hour late or he just called or, you know, or, you know, Jay needs this survey uh, text, I mean, sent to her right now. Can you make a change? Or I just, you know, there is no, anything else goes into, I do have an Asana project for each client. And then we communicate, the communication is actually there back and forth as well. If we need to make a comment or if we need to communicate on the Asana. That Got it. Basically, yeah. So I don't. So email, internal communication, and why don't we talk about task management yeah. since we're there? Yeah, task management is like it's huge. I mean, either Monday, Asana, uh, Taskmaster. I mean, I've seen I've seen a lot. I mean, people uh, love everything that. Um, Owen we, says we, hi. Owen, hey, Owen. Yes, and we're gonna. Talk we talked about, about, about you sweet already. Process. Yeah. Absolutely, <laughs> we, we love sweet process and. It's a huge time saver and a huge productivity tool. So we're going to talk about sweet process in a second. But in terms of the project management part of it or the task management, so then we use, um, 
I personally use Asana. I like it. I also really like Monday. So it's both. You have to figure out which one you like best. Um, so what I do is everything goes on my Asana. That's my to-do list. I like to use um, the um, my tasks. Very, I'm very efficient with that. I actually have my tasks separated into sections. So I have the morning, the afternoon, evening, end of the day, because I also put my personal stuff on it. And everything, as I mentioned before, I email into my Asana. I create it in Asana. I don't have any more of those to-do lists. You know, I try to integrate notebooks and pieces of paper and everything. I mean, I do have papers on my desk because when I'm talking, you know, I take notes. I'm not necessarily going to start typing right now, but I then immediately transfer it into Asana. You know, it has to be on Asana. And um, I use also the calendar function. So if I schedule something for the day and this is an important tip if you schedule your day schedule it for to win not to lose you know what do i mean you know if you schedule if we have that many minutes how many minutes do we have in an eight hour day yeah a set amount 480 right i mean do you have more jeremy no not that i know of <laughs> <laughs> sometimes i feel like i have less but yeah yeah exactly so we have the same amount of minutes some of us can use those minutes better than others so we have more right but if you have a task, if I have three, like let's say four, min, four, four one hour meetings, right? So that's right there, four hours that are taken by a meeting. I do need to eat, get up a little bit, take a break. Okay, so that's we'll get together to let's uh, take, like together it will be about 15, 20, 30 minutes, whatever it is for you, right? So you have to account mm -hmm. for it. And then I have three and a half hours left. Now, if I schedule myself with tasks that are seven hours, I will end my day not accomplished. I will feel like, oh, this day just went by and I didn't do what I wanted to do. And then I beat myself up for it. And it just becomes this, you know, you get to the end of the day and you don't feel accomplished. So that's every day for me. I'm just <laughs> right. So, but you know what? If you actually look, like, let's yeah. say I use my day, that's why I schedule the morning, the afternoon, the evening, end of the day. You know, if I have it scheduled and then I schedule five things in the morning, but I already have two meetings, it's not going to happen. So why set yourself for a lose? You know, just like win at it, you know, celebrate it. That's another thing. We have to celebrate our accomplishments. So I schedule, I go look, okay, I have two minutes in a two minute, two meetings in the morning. I can also accomplish two half an hour blocks to accomplish different tasks. Then I check it off. It's a win. I had a great morning, right? As opposed to I have like five things that I schedule myself in the morning and the two meetings. It's noon. Go like, oh, my morning was sucked. I mean, I didn't accomplish what I wanted to accomplish. You see the different in difference in attitudes? So, of course, you want to be more efficient and do more, but don't over schedule yourself. And then it becomes the to-do list is kind of like it becomes nothing. You, then you don't you kind of ignore it. Okay, yeah. that's my to-do list, but I'm really doing this, right? Totally. I want to hear some more Asana tips. I just want to point out all these things we're mentioning are either free or very low cost. Like okay. Slack is free. Asana is free up to a certain number of users, which basically you can you can use it for a long time without having to pay anything. Sanebox is like $9 a month. I mean, really inexpensive. The, G, the email meter is free, right? So all these yeah. things do not cost money, really. Right. Um, I mean, premium Asana, functions too. Asana, I actually, I do pay for Asana because yeah. I like the, the paid version, but it's like $11 a month per user. Yeah. You can, you can use tags and I use tags a lot and I use a lot of yeah. labels. So it's all colorful, you know? So I have yeah. it labeled. We, we use, yeah, the paid version of Asana, but for many years we didn't because we didn't you. need to. Yeah. Same but here. yeah. And Monday is awesome. It's so colorful as well. You can switch the tags and you can do so many things and it's, easy to use you know i mean i know for some of you it might not be easy so then get an expert to help you, you gotta get an expert that. yeah but i mean I, yeah. I i encourage anyone to get, get an expert even if it comes natural to you you know because someone who knows what they're doing to set it up properly the first time around i wish we would have done that a long time ago is critical because yeah. they'll set it up so they're actually working how it should instead of piecemealing it together like we did Exactly. No, exactly. <laughs> I mean, that's what we do is we, we basically, 
um, identify the workflows for our clients, do the flow chart, figure out how it goes, and then what tool needs to be used where and how to use it. We already know how to do it. We're experts at it. You know, it can take us two hours to build something that you will have to figure out like 20, 30 hours how to figure it out, right? But even if you don't, to your point, even if you're just starting out, it's easy to use and it's free and you can figure out at least some functionality that's better than none. So that's definitely so. And there are so many tricks and tools in Asana that, you know, you can use the tags, you can use reports, you can definitely get it to a point that it is working great, templates, etc. I mean, I'm not going to cover all of them right now. And I also don't want to confuse our listeners. Um, if you want to do yeah. it yourself, then go to us. I mean, they have a great blog where you can learn a lot of things. The same thing with Monday and other systems. Yeah. But use a task management system. No, don't have just random list anywhere. And also that way you can get it out of your, um, basically out of your inbox. Yeah, I mean, yeah, there's people talk about Asana, Monday, Trello. <laughs> there's a bunch out there. So whatever you like. I personally, we use Asana. I know you use Asana as well, but they're all, they all work and they're all good and people all like them for different reasons. So, you know, we can get super detailed with it, but just play around with it and you can set up your check. You know, if you want to really, we use it to stay organized and to make right. sure we're not missing <laughs> steps. Um, and so that's what we use it for. So um, so we talked about email, task, internal communication. Um, you were saying something about maybe notes or document management, which one? Yeah. So, well, let's talk about sweet process. What do we use sweet process for? Sweet process is used to document your workflows and to document the different processes and procedures that you're using in your company. And why do we save time doing that? It's because if you have repetitive tasks that you're doing over and over and over again, if you have it documented, then it is something that your team can do repetitively without variation. So it takes the time out of reinventing the wheel every single time, right? It also takes the time when you're training somebody. I create amazing checklists in Sweet Process for onboarding. Like let's say you're onboarding a person and you want to make sure that they are all trained the same way. So you create a checklist there where they you tell them exactly what they need to be trained on and what is the sequence to do that. And then they go in there and in sweet process, you can use all kinds. You can use videos, you can use checklists, you can use um, audio, you can use um, screenshots, etc. So it's basically like this training manual and standard operating procedure manual on the cloud on steroids like beautiful flexible you can change it you can keep it up to date it has version control etc so i think that a tool like sweet process saves you so much time when you want to train your team when you want to have a place where all of your processes are documented this is the tool to use. And especially now when we, you know, when people work from home and you have to have that uniformity, they have, you have to have the same way of doing things. Um, highly recommend checking it out and using that tool. Yeah. I mean, we were having a conversation with you and one of your clients that you help, you know, a lot of streamline and efficiency and procedures. And they were saying that, they had staff for many years that all the knowledge base was in that staff's head. And if that staff right. left or when they left, that was a huge problem for the company because that knowledge base left with that person. Whereas in something, if you're using a sweet process, the next person comes on and just hits the ground running where that other person left off. And there's no worry of, oh my God, this person leaves, we are screwed. Absolutely. And here's another efficiency tool. I mean, an efficiency trick on how to use it also with sweet process, use videos. So what I do is I use actually one of my clients that use sweet process that we documented all of his processes and procedures on sweet process. He taught me, he showed me this tool and it's great. It's called Screencastify. So mm. you can, it's like Loom, like L-O-O-M. So Loom is great as well. Some of my clients use Loom. I use uh, Screencastify, which is a Chrome extension. So if I want to, if I'm doing something and it's important for me to show somebody else how I'm doing it, I just click on Screencastify. I just start the video. 
it records it and then you um it gives you an, a link so you can actually paste that link into sweet process yeah. in the actual um like you write you're writing a procedure on how to do something yeah. let's say we are writing a procedure on how to do a facebook live okay so you can record all the steps that you are doing in order to start it take that link and put it into sweet process you know start facebook live this is yeah. how you do it follow those steps yeah so that's huge i mean using videos is a time saver so let's say you want to explain a client or show a client something that you've done so instead of sitting there and writing the long email you can just take a video with a screenshot with everything and just send it to them via slack via email whatever you're using so that's great efficiency tool as well and yeah, if you look at it like uh, you could see actually on my browser the funny thing is you could see the loom google chrome plugin there on my browser and then the same thing as screencastify you could have it literally as a google chrome plugin you just click it it's right there and just create a video very quickly yeah do you use a lot of videos yeah totally yeah i use it all the time i mean i used to have the free version which only allows you five minutes but very soon i am making videos that are longer than five minutes because i need to record more and then they have a great editing tool where you can actually clip the video very easily nice so yeah, yeah. I love it. Absolutely. Um, so the the document management suite process using combination of Screencastify or you use Loom, anything else as far as the document management? Well, document management is also, you know, I mean, suite process basically is a document. It's where you document your, it's a process and procedures documentation. Yeah. The, the document management is basically avoiding having multiple folders all over the place. Like where do you put your, um, your the different documents, right? So you have to be organized in order to do that. So that those would be tools like OneDrive, Dropbox, Google um, Google Drive, but then have a plan. You know, it's just like if you had a filing cabinet and you just threw pay, paper there. Can you imagine that? I mean, think about this analogy, yeah. a file cabinet with papers all over, in, in stacks of papers all over, right? Would you be able to find those papers? Now, granted, we have search tools, so probably you could find some of those papers, right? But yeah. think about it Be in terms of organization. Make a plan for that as well. How are you going to file things? You know, it's it's really, I really like nice, neat file folder, folders that have, you know, label, have a great labeler, and I label it, you know, when I used to use... Um, actual files i mean i do have some files but the majority of them now online right so use the same system i have a folder for clients and then i have all my clients there and then i have a folder for internal so you can have finance you can have hr you can have whatever you you have but decide on the decide on the folders ahead of time let everyone know what the system is let them know what is the system for naming what's the naming convention for your files and then you can look at your files and you can be you can see what's there as opposed to just like bunch random um, a bunch of random folder um, documents right so, or spreadsheets you know like you did this spreadsheet just to calculate something and you left it as book one and you never rename it and now it's sitting there and we have book one two three four i mean i've seen all the way up to 53. We're like what are those spreadsheets i don't know let's open each one and figure out what they are right what a waste of time as opposed to doing it right the first time and having it organized. So we talk about task management, email, uh, document management, uh, internal communication. Uh, let's talk about notes. I love notes. What do you use in order to take notes? You know, um, I'm scared to tell you. But um, no, I, I a, here's what I mean. When I'm on a call like this, I literally write it on paper. Right. Um, and then what I will do is, I just want to keep it somewhere so i will take a picture of it and email it to myself yeah and i you do know. that too i mean i use one note and the nice thing about one note is that you can actually do take the picture right so i use um and you can use evernote whatever works for you but what i like about one note they have really cool features one of them is hmm. that on my phone you know because i have it on my phone and the computer so you can go to one note app open the notebook because there can be different notebooks, electronic notebooks, right? So let's say, for instance, I have, let's say when I'm talking to you, so I have a notebook on, in this case, I have a notebook, it's called Productivity Tools. 
So, or let's say if I want to have um, whatever we're talking, let's say you are a client. So we talked, I took the notes. I will take a picture of it with my phone in one note. There is actually, when you start writing the note, there is the camera symbol there and you can just take it and it will take it and it will um, basically put the, put the, um, the picture right there on your page. Hmm. Very, very efficient. And if I'm talking to a prospect, I will take a picture of my notes and I will take it, I will put it then in my CRM. You know, I will. One thing that I like about um, OneNote is that you can um, take a picture of something that you wrote from in a, in a document or even a picture of a page. So if I'm reading a book and I really like that paragraph and I want to remember it, right? So instead of highlighting it, because I don't like to highlight my books. So instead of highlighting it, I can take, I can basically snap a picture, get it onto OneNote, and then you can copy it to text. So it actually will copy it to actual text. So you don't have to retype it. Mm. It will be there. And then when you search, you can always find, let's say I read um, something in a book and there is a great quote about productivity. I can actually take it copy to text and then highlight it. So, mm. and I find that having a notebook with all, with clients, then I can actually type, um, type the notes there. If I'm, I'm, sometimes I type it during a call or if I take notes on a paper, then I can take a picture and do that or I can scan it as well. So you can- You have an app for that. This is an app on your phone and also a desktop app or? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's yeah. both. Okay. And this one is free. It's if you have the mark, I, I don't know. I think you have to have the Microsoft mm -hmm. uh, suite, but I think you it might be also free. I mean, I have it as part of my Office 365. Mm -hmm. Great, great tool. A lot of options. Again, you need to know it, but it's not that hard. Yeah. And if and you like, by the way, if you like to cook, if you go to any place and you have a recipe, you can actually take a picture of the recipe, put it in there, and there is a function where it actually will translate the recipe into a written recipe. Like it will wow. take all the other pictures away, and it, you will just have that uh, recipe there. So that's also a great function there. I actually love that. Yeah. Um, so that's note taking. Anything else on that? Um, I think you again. You have to be organized. You have to figure <laughs> out ahead of time the plan on how to do it. Otherwise, it okay. becomes clutter very fast. Um. I figure for the last like nine minutes, I think we could do rapid fire on uh, rapid fire, all maybe uh, apps, Chrome plugins, or desktop apps that you use. The, the, I think the last one we didn't talk about is the calendars um, and CRM. So we can go through that really quickly. But I want to go through like rapid fire of like, here's all the tools you use and you like. Maybe some we didn't mention. Like I think we both use last. I use LastPass. Like it doesn't fall into any of these categories, but it's kind of just tools we use to be more productive. So I figured maybe I don't know what you use for calendars. I use Acuity Scheduling um, in Google Calendar. Calendar. Use yeah. Calendly and then CRMs. What do you What do you use for CRM? I use Pipe Drive. Pipe Drive. I use Pipe Drive as well. And I heard I had one of the founders on on the podcast, they were 10,000 customers when I first interviewed them. Now they're over 100,000 customers. Wow. Okay. When I, uh, like now. So yeah, I love pipe drive as well. So you know what we didn't talk about, Jeremy and I, we can go over the list, but it's yeah. the integrations. And that's what I like. That's okay. another tool like Slack, Asana and pipe drive. They're all integrated for me with my calendar. You know, it's kind of like when you integrate it, then you create that automation, right? So mm. let's say you have on your CRM, you have your flow of customers, somebody signs up, then you say, okay, when we, they move from the stage of being, let's say, negotiation stage into a closing stage, then it will also create, um, after they close, it creates a board in Asana with all the uh, details there. So I don't have to go create it, but it's all there, right? So I think that having integrations between the different- uh, So that's integration from pipe drive to Asana? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So once you drag it, if anyone's used pipe drive, it's super simple and easy, you know, so you drag it to basically across the the different columns or whatever, however you set up, and that will automatically create something in Asana for you. Yep. Ex ex absolutely. And it also, you can also integrate it with Slack. So every time there is a communication, remember what we said, communicate about a client, don't communicate in Slack, communicate in Asana, but you can communicate in Asana via Slack. 
But that's got kind it. of like I, that, that's a little bit of a higher level, so yes. I don't want to confuse people. No, I get it. Yeah. You basically the bottom line with that is they all integrate, so there you can't create automations. So you aren't physically going into pipe drive, Anasana, and Slack. It all you can have certain things trigger something else um, exactly. when you get get to that point. I guess you could say. Yeah. It's all about getting more minutes in a day. I mean, that's the name of the game is like, how can you gain more minutes, right? Yeah. And in having the team, you know, when you your team are using these tools, they're gaining more minutes as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, so let's do rapid fire because I know we have about six minutes. Okay. And um, anything, I'll, I'll start rapid fire and that will kind of spark your whatever whatever uh, you're thinking. But, you know, I, I'll just go, I use Slack. We use Typeform a lot. Oh, talk Zapier. about Typeform. We didn't talk about that. Oh, no. Go ahead. Typeform, Zapier, Text Expander, which is like my ultimate favorite tool of all time. If you actually want to. So you can look these up, textexpander.com. It's like my favorite thing to use on a daily basis. If it went down, do you know, like I would be frantic. I know. Um, Asana, Slack, um, LastPass. Uh, pipe drive, which you mentioned. I also, I use Audible a lot just for, you know, reading and Marco Polo for communication, just like quick video chats that's efficient with, with friends and even business colleagues. Um, and then I have some, some health. Um, and then we mentioned Loom. Um, I think I'm trying to look at, see what I use. We, my, um, I have Loom, pipe drive, webinar jam, uh, awesome screenshot, um, and LastPass in my kind of in my Google Chrome plugin section there. Um, and then I have some health apps that I use. I use Zero. I do intermittent fasting. So that tracks my intermittent fasting. I use the Aura Ring, which is for sleep. And um, I use Map My Walk just to when I'm going on walks or runs or bikes, just to map how much, you know, how many mileage and time and everything like that. So um, I'll let you go. Uh -huh. That's incredible. I do intermittent fasting as well. I mean, I don't have an app for it, but I love intermittent fasting. Zero is free and basically it's so easy to use. So you could track, it tracks, old, like I used to do 20 hour fasting on and eat within a four hour period. So it, yeah. it basically just tracks it for me. So we do the same. Okay, good. I love it. So um, I think you mentioned, yeah. Okay. So I use also Calendly for um, scheduling. I um, love rev.com, which is basically I can dictate, like I can talk. It's on my phone. I have the app. I mm -hmm. Let's say I finish a meeting. I just dictate and then I get the transcri um, it transcribes it and then I can put my notes into Pipedrive. So rev.com is another one. Um, I use Google Forms. You use Typeform. I mean, I like the form part of it. Um, mile IQ, just to track the miles. I'm not driving much now with the stay at home thing, but uh, before that I was driving all over the place mm -hmm. and mile IQ. Uh, we mentioned sweet process. Uh, I think those are the main ones that... Um, Any other Google Chrome plugins you use besides screen Screencastify? A screencast, I'm looking at my Google Chrome. I have the Calendly one, so that's mm -hmm. very easy through my calendar. The OneNote um, Google extension is really good. Chrome extension is really good as well because you can capture anything on the web and just put it as a note in the notebook. Um, I have my LastPass here. What is this? Um, the drop, yeah. Uh, oh, Grammarly. I like Grammarly because mm -hmm. it corrects your grammar, right? Mm -hmm. So that's very good. Zoom, of course. You know, it immediately goes into my Calendly and my. Um, that's that's a great extension, and I think those are all my extensions here. Yeah. Anything laptop. on your your apps on your phone that you use and recommend? We, we named them. I mean, definitely the ref.com is awesome. Yeah. And then the OneNote, that's my favorite new one, is the OneNote. I use it all the time. I, my um, app on my phone, the MyLiQ, the Audible. Yeah, I think we named them Asana. Yeah. yeah. We covered a lot. Um, yeah. Let's... Uh, talk up, bring up your website so people can check it out and um, bizsuccesscg.com. I'll bring it up here. Um, you have some amazing, I was reading this morning, just some amazing testimonials that I was reading. Like, um, you know, people are like, it's the best thing I ever did was hire her, you know, uh, almost immediately. <laughs> I, the best decision I ever made. So 
Um, tell people just maybe a little about but when someone you you get on board, you start with someone, how does it work? So it depends on what they're signed up for. You know, we do different things. Like we document the processes and procedures for companies. That's where, you know, we use Sweet Process and uh, we put basically, we get all the training manual and the, and the processes and procedures. So when we do that, we onboard them and we start the process, which would be first of all, identifying the entire, mapping the entire flows in the company, the, the workflows in the company. And then from there, we go into the documentation process. We also help businesses with implementing those efficiency tools. So let's say you have a business and you want to use a task management. You want to use Asana. You want to use Monday. You're not sure how to build it. What's the best way to do that? So we we help you do that. That's what we do. We basically set up all those systems for you so you can just walk in there. We train you as well. We are very good trainers. So we train you and your staff how to do that. And um, we make sure that your business is run smoothly. I mean, what we do is we basically b bring order into businesses. That's right, what we exactly. Do. Adi, thank you so much. It's always a pleasure talking to you. Everyone check out bizsuccesscg.com and put your comments if you're, if you're live or if you're watching this on one of the podcast channels. Thank you, Jeremy. Thanks. What I got, you can't buy. It resides between my eyes. Walked through the fire, came out better on the other side. Like a beach if you find the sand right now I feel like a hundred grand